Hi, and thank you for joining us for the University of Rochester Orchestra's Digital Spring Performance. My name is Rachel Waddell, and I am the Director of Orchestral Activities here at the University of Rochester's River Campus. Over the past year and a half, our orchestras have adapted to challenging new restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. While frustrating, these changes have also encouraged us to think about our orchestras and our role in our community, namely that we have one, whether we perform live or not. This includes a responsibility to the musicians to continue to make music safely, to our campus community who looks for musical opportunities and experiences, and to the broader Rochester community that, like many communities, has turned to music to help cope with the extreme emotional, psychological, and physical tolls of this past year. With the continued help and support of the University of Rochester's AME program and my colleague Stephen Russner, we've been able to help to continue to record and bring you the program that we're excited to share with you this evening. First, I would like to take a minute to thank everyone that tuned in to our digital performance and fundraiser last fall. Your donations helped to make these recordings possible, and we are continuing to fundraise towards the installation of a Dante network and new recording equipment for Strong Auditorium. We are happy to accept donations and support for our orchestras, and a donation link has been provided below if you are so inclined and able to help support us in this mission. We'll also include a link to that fall program, as well as our Captain Beethoven performance, in case you missed those. This evening, you will first hear our University of Rochester Chamber Orchestra perform. We have three selections for you, Debussy's Petite Suite, Vivian Fine's piece for Muted Strings, and Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Spring Suite. To me, all three pieces are united by the idea of reawakening and reemerging from darkness, just as Rochester enters spring and leaves quarantine. Of these three works, the Vivian Fine is probably the least known, so I'll take just a second to explain that work in our collaboration. This is an elegy for string orchestra, written by American composer Vivian Vine for the children of Spain during the Spanish Civil War. Our performance is dedicated to those that our campus community has lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. We partnered with Missy Full Smith and the University of Rochester's program of dance and movement to bring this work to life. First, please enjoy our performance of Debussy's Petite Suite, a collection of four evocative pieces that capture the childlike innocence of nature and movement.
I'm really grateful that Rachel invited me to collaborate on Piece for Muted Strings by Vivian Fine. I worked with students from the program of Dance and Movement, and there were nine of them, and we worked in a socially distanced way with masks and outdoors when we could. Um, but it was winter, and winter in, in a way was important because it felt like sort of that final season, um, and this piece as a tribute to those lost during this pandemic um, that felt right. And I also asked as part of the process for the dancers to identify someone that they cared about that meant a lot to them and to think of them in a multi-sensory way, like where would you be with this person? What would you be doing? What would the smells be? What would be happening? And so that helped us determine where to, um, to video and capture video um, in which location. And um, I really appreciated all of their sincerity and work. And particularly during this kind of immense time of grief, it was one way to bring people together um, and to gather our energy and um, kind of offer it up. So I hope you enjoy.
That is such beautiful and poignant choreography and cinematography from Missy and her students. And I want to extend a very sincere thank you to them again for their hard work. I would also like to thank everyone that submitted photos for our ending collage. Thank you for trusting us with those. Thank you for trusting us with your memories and your loved ones. It seems appropriate here to take time to pause and to offer a moment of silence and reflection for all those we've lost and all that's been lost and continues to be lost. Please join me. Finally, on our chamber orchestra portion of the program, we will hear Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Spring Suite. Our chamber orchestra had planned on performing this last year, but the pandemic stopped that. So this piece to us represents something unfinished. This big challenge we wanted to complete that became all the more challenging because now we have masks on our faces and mutes and cloths stuffed into our instruments and we're far apart from one another but it was important for us to complete it. And now I think it holds even more, much more meaning for us than it would have then. Now this suite is derived from a full ballet that follows a young couple through their emotional fears and trepidations of both marriage and life in a new frontier. Although Copeland's work is about prairie life and the true spirit of music, we can choose to have it be come about so much more. There is still so much uncertainty for our future, but through our community we have achieved and can continue to demonstrate incredible strength, resilience, and healing. Enjoy.
Congratulations to our University of Rochester Chamber Orchestra. Before we listen to our symphony orchestra's performance, I want to briefly discuss some of our projects and opportunities that we've offered over the course of the last semester and year. For those of you who were able to join us last fall, you'll remember that we put together a virtual gala, concert, and fundraiser and partnered with Oberlin Conservatory for Captain Beethoven. Again, those links are included in the video description below if you missed those performances and want to check them out. We also embarked on a virtual postcard series, which our chamber ensembles have continued this semester in close collaboration with Eastman Performing Arts Medicine. So I'd like to extend a huge thank you to Galen McCormick for that partnership and all the enriching programming that she has helped to bring us this semester. Last semester, we also did a Composer Spotlight series of interviews and profiles that challenged us to expand our knowledge of the orchestral canon. And this semester, we offered two virtual master classes, one for strings and one for piano, in place of our annual concerto competition. Those links can also be found below. And just a few weeks ago, we had our first live performance in over a year, continuing the tradition of performing the finale of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture on the last day of classes. If you would like to contribute to furthering these types of programs or to our continued efforts to fundraise towards a Dante network, we are happily still accepting donations and you can use the link below. Thanks. We'll now turn to the University of Rochester Symphony Orchestra, which also faced the same challenges as our chamber orchestra, perhaps even more so because it is a much larger ensemble. First up, we will hear the third movement of the Yellow River Piano Concerto with soloist Yui Wang. The Yellow River Concerto was composed by a coalition of Chinese composers and based on the Yellow River Cantata by Xi'an Xinghai. This is an incredible work that I was not familiar with until this last semester, and I am truly indebted to Yui for introducing me to this fabulous piece. Then we will hear an arrangement of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue with piano soloist Jacob Rose, who also did the video editing for that performance. And then we'll hear an arrangement of music from Howard Shore's Lord of the Rings, conducted by Donovan Snyder, who also did the video editing for that performance. And finally, we'll hear Dmitry Shostakovich's Variety Suite No. 1, which is a compilation of film music by Shostakovich for various film scores he composed. You may be familiar with the famous Waltz No. 2, which is the seventh movement, this work also features saxophone throughout, making it very unique to the orchestral repertoire. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Stephen Ressner. I'm a professor in the audio and music engineering department here at the University of Rochester. Now, over the last few semesters, we've brought the university orchestras to your home. That was a necessity over this pandemic. It took a lot of work, both on the performance side, the students getting their pieces ready, and on the production side. I had a group of students that helped me uh, set up microphones, edit, mix, and master the recordings. This takes weeks of planning uh, and lots of equipment being dragged from one space to another. In the future, we'd like to make that a lot easier by installing uh, dedicated sound recording equipment in the spaces in which the university orchestra performs. So with your help, we'd like to bring you more recordings in the future. So thank you for listening and I hope to see you again in the future. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to play with a full orchestra at such a difficult time. I play the third movement from the Yellow River Concerto with the Symphony Orchestra this semester. The first piano solo from that piece always pictures a beautiful sunny day for me, and I hope that my playing can also bring you something that you can relate to.
I was fortunate enough to conduct a medley from the Lord of the Rings for the symphony orchestra this semester. It was great to be on that side of the podium, and I thank Dr. Waddell for giving me that opportunity. I was also happy to play in the symphony orchestra on the other pieces, and excited to finish playing Appalachian Spring, which we had started in the chamber orchestra before the pandemic started last year. Even though we didn't get to have a live performance of it, I was happy to play in the recording. It was a great experience to finish off my undergraduate career.
Before we listen to the fun and beloved Shostakovich Variety Suite No. 1, I would like to thank everyone that made this evening's production possible. Thank you again to Missy and her students and the program of Dance and Movement. Much continued thanks and appreciation to Stephen Rusner and his students in AME. Neither this production or a falls would have been possible without Stephen's incredible hard work and dedication and recording and editing our performances. I would also like to thank our videography team, which includes Alyssa Moy, Donovan Snyder, Jacob Rose, and my poor husband, Graham Richards, who organized all the cameras and footage for over 64 hours of recording. Thanks to Jimmy Warlick, Event and Classroom Management, Lori Packer and Jeanette Colby for helping with marketing and PR and social media, to Ashley Smith and Development, thank you all. Perhaps most importantly, I would like to thank all of you for your continued support of our students, orchestra, and program. If you're inspired by what you saw this evening, please continue to support us by attending our live and recorded performances, participating in our additional collaborations, and supporting our collaborators, or consider making a donation to our program. However you choose to support us, we could not have made it through this past year without you, and we are beyond grateful to you all. We look forward to continuing to serve you and continuing to grow into an ensemble that is reflective of the spirit and potential of a 21st century American orchestra. Thank you. Thank you.